So we know that El Chapo is done. He is a DX prison for life. He ain't coming home. There's nothing he could possibly do to get out. He may be in jail, but the billion dollar cartel that he funded is still flourishing under the direction of his two favorite sons. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling. Six time failing, I went back to prison. Got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to get back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them. From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision. To, to strong, from wrong to strong, from wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong. Hey, what's up, guys? JC with Wrong to Strong. You already know what it is. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing, and leave a comment. If you are part of my Ron Strong family, you guys already know, Subanse a la Suburban. Let's put some gas in it so we don't end up in the wrong hood and get rammed by the wrong people. <laughs> What's up, Rasa? JC, man, and I am Ron Strong. You know, you know me and my shenanigans, you know. So at El Chapo's sentencing, the judge said this. These are his exact words. The cartel has the capability and resources and the will to harm witnesses and their families even after their relocation. Yeah, those are some uh, pretty harsh words. They're pretty much letting you know that you're testifying, we're gonna help you, but uh, you're gonna still pretty much end up somewhere still. <laughs> but the two brothers had, you know, they've been running their father's empire with an iron fist. Ivan and Alfredo are, are said to be the drug lord's favorite sons the ones that he personally groomed to take over the family business. They were born uh, to his first wife, Maria. The couple actually had three children, but one of them was killed. Uh, Alfredo was added to the most wanted list for drug trafficking in Illinois. Uh, Illinois, Illinois, not Illinois. <laughs> With uh, this big war that's been going on in, in Mexico, it's 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 um it's it's been going nonstop. I mean, they were picked up at a restaurant by you know El Mencho's people. They were uh, tried to be uh, ambushed at uh, at a meeting. On and on and on, all this stuff has been going on. But it's just to show you that they are very much in control. But unlike their father, who believed in keeping like a low profile, they are very, very not hiding. They love to show off. And I mean, it, it just shows that the whole family is still in control of a, a big amount of money and, you know, the, the criminal network that, they, they, that their father built. Um, and I don't think it's going to change. So, you know, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of these cartels when they are started if you go if you guys watch 
the, the series Mexican Narcos, you'll see how much El Chapo actually struggled to get to the top. You know, nobody wanted to just hand it to him because when you're making big amounts of money like this, you you get greedy, you get jealous. You, there's all these things that come with it. And you don't just want to hand it over to somebody that's like hungry. It's not like, you know, you're playing basketball and you're like, put me in coach and you know that the team's going to do better because they put you in. No, nobody wants to hand it over like that. So in, in these shows, you'll see how much El Chapo actually struggled uh, time after time where people were, were betraying him and, and all these things. But once you make it to the top, and this is actually a norm in this lifestyle, is that once you make it to the top, you make sure that your sons, your nephews, your family stays in control of that organization. It took you blood, sweat, and tears to get to the top. So why would you not make sure that your family takes over when you're gone? Because pretty much you make plans for that. You know that you're not going to last in this for the, for the long run. You know, either you're going to get locked up or you're going to get killed. And I, and I think that's what El Chapo planned for was to make sure that his sons were groomed and, and knew what was going to happen and what was going to take part of, of this whole organization because it's a billion dollar organization. It's a lot of money. And when you have money like that, When you have money like that, there's a lot of things you could do. You know, they've run into a lot of comp, you know, a lot of complicated stuff with other cartels and stuff like that, but I think what they failed to realize is that there's money for everybody, but I guess they don't see it like that because they want to be able to control everything. And that, that's, I think that's the, like the number one thing. It's just like when, um, and I'll, I'll make a video on the Setas, but it's just like when the Setas first started, you know, they were a special force team that was brought in to take care of business. And then they just, they seen the, the amount of money and everything that would could, could be, be made. And they ended up, you know, starting their own stuff and went to war with the people that actually gave them the job in the first place. And, and that, and that's the thing is that, you know, I don't think that anybody foreseen that, you know, El Chapo was going to get caught this fast and everything was going to happen. You know how the United States extradited on him so fast and everything. Everybody, everybody foreseen a different story just because it doesn't happen this fast. Usually, usually, you know, high cartel members stay in power for a long time, just like uh, Mario Zambada. You know, I mean, he's never done a day in jail. He's never been caught, never nothing. And you know, there's, there's stories that that he was actually with uh, the Chop, Chapo sons when they actually got set up by a licenciado and they almost got killed. But it's he said, she said, there's a lot of stories going on, man. All I know is that when cartels like this, these are formed, it always stays in the family no matter what no matter what it's always a daughter a son that's taking over the whole network because it's like a company if you really think about it it's an exportation company they're exporting to europe the islands canada us it's an exportation company so they make sure that business is going as should be and when you're making billions like this guess what you bring in experts and you get the you get the the job done. Let's let's take for an instant. It was all over the news when uh, his son got caught. He got arrested, and the amount of damage that they did in the city, where the even the president said, "I gave the green light to let him go to make sure that nobody got hurt." 
When the president of that whole country is saying, yeah, I let him go, that means that these guys are not playing. They showed up in military vehicles. They showed up with military guns. They, I, I mean, you name it. You're making billions of dollars. Guess what? You got the guns that the government got. got. You got. You got everything that they have. Yeah, it's just like the the uh, video that I did on submarines. I think in the past week, I was looking at some stuff. They caught like 14 submarines. Come on, man. You're making that amount of money. You got the same stuff the government has. And when I'm saying the same stuff, I'm talking about grenade launchers, machine guns, all that stuff. AK-47s is like a handgun now. In Mexico you know what I mean it ain't nothing so yeah they're 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 complete control of everything they're running the business of day to day and you know what a lot of people didn't didn't think that they were gonna actually be able to run the business and this is why there was a little bit and there still is a little bit of a power struggle because uh, what what happens when a cartel is hit hard there's a power struggle, and that's in everything. Gangs, mob, you name it. It breaks up into little factions, and it does what it does. The only thing is that El Chapo's sons had a lot of respect from a lot of their, their people, and that's what kept them in, in check. You can't break off and then expect for everybody to follow you if you're not one of the main, main bloodlines. And that's what El Chapo's sons are. They're bloodline. You know, his, da his daughter is focused on El Chapo's like clothing line and brand. She doesn't even need to mess with that because that alone is creating hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars because everybody's wearing that stuff everybody's rocking it i mean it, it is crazy because well, like i told you guys before in the past we're living in a time where people actually want to see this stuff they want to hear the stories they want to see the movies they want to read the books you know the mob the mob had their time but it's past it's done it's cartel time, like story time, movie time, all this stuff. And that's like what I said in the last video. You make cartel movies, don't hire Puerto Rican or uh, actors from Spain to pretend like they're Mexican because it, just, it doesn't sound right. Your Spanish is not the same as ours. We don't say certain words that you say. We talk different. Yeah. We do. <laughs> I need to get a fucking job in one of those movies. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I need to touch up on this week. Just because a lot that's going on over there. The setas are trying to make like a little comeback. Uh, uh, the Jalisco cartel is going through a lot of fights in, in uh, Guanajuato. Um, you know, they call that area... Tierra Caliente over there by Michoacan, um, Guanajuato, Ciudad de Mexico, all that area. And there's a lot going on right now in Mexico, a lot. But it's because of the money, the politics, the corruption, the drugs, the business, money, power. You know, you know what it is, guys. It's, it's, it's a ruler of all evil. This is why I'm glad I am out of that life. This is why I'm happy that I live a different life because it's priceless. This, this what I live and what I have now is priceless. My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you have not subscribed to our channel, you better subscribe. You already know. Don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.